you know, uh, you know, they got some of the running game going, but you know, if you've got that run threat and then you got a pass threat, now you're talking about a team that every week you got a chance to win. You expect to win every week. You're going to be scoring points. You're moving the ball. And you wonder if, you know, Jalen's going to start seeing things as clearly as Minshew sees things. He knows where he's going with the ball. Uh, before he gets his hands on it, he knows where he's going with it. Welcome back, National Football Show, Dan Solio. It was a great college football weekend and a great NFL weekend. By the way, how about the way those Redskins are playing? Okay, I mean, back to 500. Ron Rivera can coach. And that kid, Tyler Heineke, he could play. And that's kind of a little bit of the comparison that I'm making here with this Gardner Minshew. And by the way, doesn't it show you the importance also of having a backup quarterback? And how these guys carve out these careers like Ryan Fitzpatrick and all these other guys that have played in the league like 16, 17 years like Chase Daniels. It just shows you the importance of having one of these guys. And the Eagles seemingly have it. 20 of 25. He was great in this game against the Jets. Let's bring our friend in, Gary Cobb from Fox 29. And right out of the gate, Gary, let's ask the tough question here. I mean, the way you saw the offense, and you and I have been saying – Man, sometimes the situational play calling that Nick Sirianni has makes the Eagle offense not look like a pro-style offense. But when you put a guy that's a traditional drop-back guy back there, it looks like a pro offense. Should the Eagles stick with Minshew, or do you believe that they should go to Jalen Hurts after the bye? Well, you know, that comes down to, you know, what's the priority? Is the priority winning now? Or is the priority trying to find your long-term franchise quarterback? Now, if it's just winning now, I'm, I might have to say, you know, uh, Minchu gives you the best chance to win right now. Because when you're playing against Washington, you can't turn the ball over. If you're turning the ball over, if you can't make the easy throw, if you can't read, you know, the – the the uh the defense they're in then that 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 brings a challenge i i know that jalen helps their running game with his ability of course and even as you know as a passer his his ability to scramble Minchu does not have that type of speed and athleticism you know he he's not a sitting duck, duck though he's, he's not you know uh klecko uh, i mean uh, um you know any, any of those guys who are um like um, Manning, Jake, like Manning or Brady, or that yeah, kind of you know, guy. he's not it's a not statue like that. But, but he, he's he's not Jalen Hurts when it comes to mobility and ability to run and everything. So, I mean, it, it's a good argument as to you know who gives you the best chance to win right now. But the whole thing is, is winning right now is that the number one goal or is it? Gary, what goal? do you think is the most important to the Eagles right now? Winning right now, or do you think it is the future? Because you, well, I think you have a brilliant point here. And I think that's exactly where they are. You're you're six and seven. Yeah. What 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 what's the mentality? Well, you know, do you I think, think in the because building? they won a Super Bowl that they go, hey, we want to we want to we want to win another championship. We want to win it all. Meaning, like that's where our goal is now. So it's more important for us to find our franchise quarterback. And 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 I don't know that I could say that Jalen is that guy. I can't say right now he's that guy. Because of that game against, you know, the Giants, you know, that didn't do anything for him, you know, when it comes to be, be us to say, hey, he's the guy. And then see Minchu go out there, hey, Minchu wasn't even getting a lot of practice time. Bang, bang, bang. He's throwing the ball to Goddard. Like, there are times Goddard doesn't get the ball. You had the game against the Giants where you don't throw the ball to uh, Devontae Smith. Like, come on, what are you doing? You're throwing the ball. Come on, you know. So, uh, and then you see Minshew, how easily he's able to read what defense they're in. He's getting the ball out of his hands. He's so comfortable playing behind that line because they're an outstanding offensive line. You know, uh, 
you know, they got some of the running game going, but, you know, if you got that run threat and then you got a pass threat, now you're talking about a team that every week you got a chance to win. You expect to win every week. You're going to be scoring points. You're moving the ball. And you wonder if, you know, Jalen's going to start seeing things as clearly as Minshew sees things. He knows where he's going with the ball. Uh, before he gets his hands on it, he knows where he's going with it. You didn't see him back there where he, you know, he's he's holding it, he's holding it, he's holding it. You, you didn't see very much of that at all. So, you know, so, but another thing, you're playing the Jets too. So yeah. you, you don't know how much that plays into it. That's why this is, it's not an easy decision. You know, this is, this is a really good decision because do you want to win now? Is that the priority? Now, but the thing is, Minshew's not going to be, and, and you don't have to, you know, you don't even wonder whether he is the franchise guy, franchise guy, because he's not. You know, uh, even if you look at some of the throws he completed, he, you know, he doesn't have a, a, a really good arm, and you know, he's a lot like Jeff Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no. No. And, and Jeff is, Garcia but... won in the NFL. Yeah, but but you, you you know what the one thing we did also see in the game mm -hmm. was the emergence of a guy like Dallas Goddard where he's been invisible all year, Gary. Yeah. You just gave the guy a contract extension and as you and I talk in today's NFL, those guys who can go up the scene, they're game-changing dudes those tight ends, even That's more right. so than some of the Y's and Z's that we see in games. It was the best game I think he's had since he was a Philadelphia Eagle. Yeah, you know, and the and thing we see is you know, and we've seen this before in Goddard. When you're throwing the ball, you know, now Zach Ertz, he was an outstanding tight end, but you're throwing the ball, hey, you know that the next play is starting somewhere near where he got that ball. He's not running it much further than where he caught it at. Yeah. Goddard, once Goddard catches the ball, hey, the play just started. You got to tackle him now. <laughs> He's not just going to go to the ground. And you know a lot of those DBs, they want no part of somebody 250, like, Strong as he is, you know, because and, and then he's got that deceptive streak. He doesn't look like he's really, you know, so massively strong. But I see him blocking defensive ends, defensive tackles. I mean, blocking them. So he, he's a tremendous athlete, you know, and um, you don't see him just going down. He, he breaks tackles and then he's he's got good speed. You know, he's, he's got good quickness. So he is he has got to be a guy you got to get the ball to, especially out in open field, because uh, nobody – they're not looking forward to tackling him. And, you know, Minshew got the ball to him. I mean, right away, probably in the first two times they had the ball, he caught more passes than he's caught all year. I mean, you know, and you're going like – you're doing people a favor by not getting this guy the ball. Come on. Come on, get the guy the ball. How about this too, Gary? Yeah. I mean, like you said, you know, it's one thing to look at the kids play Minshew and it's another thing to look at the other guys around him in their play. Look at Miles Sanders too. 120 yeah. on the ground. It's the first time that the Eagles have had a 100-yard rusher in a game. And by the way, they're leading the NFL and running the ball. They're number one in the league mm. at 157. And what they have, they had almost 190 yards in this game against the Jets. It was the Jets. I get it. Yeah. But they're holding suit to it and – the emergence of Watkins. He had three catches for 60 yards. I mean, there just seems to be more people involved when you have a true, like you said, Mitch, you may not be the guy, Gary, but that style may be the style they're looking for. Well, you know, clearly, you know, we're talking about Jalen. He's got to get to where he's able to process the information quicker. That's just got to be it. You do not have, when you're playing against a good team, you don't have that long back there. That ball's got to be coming out of there. And Minchu, it's one, two, three, the ball's out, man. One, two, three, that ball's out. One, two, three, that ball's out. And and, and that's what Jalen's got to be able to do. And, you know, some people, you know, I I, I like this kid. I, I, I like uh, Jalen. I mean, he's, he's a good quality kid and everything. But, hey, this is not about liking. This is about franchise quarterback. That everybody's job is tied to this guy. Meaning, like, all of the coaches come in, they're looking over there at the quarterback. You could get all of us fired today. You screw up, we're all out of here. Hey, Gary, wait. Here, here, how about this? You know how I know you know he's not the starting quarterback of the future? 
you always started out like this. I really like the kid. And you and I will, hey, you and I will always go when we're talking about a good quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Dude, that dude can spin that pill. That dude is a player. Yeah, I got nothing right. to do with liking him. That's right. It's, it's not about liking him. And, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to so many people I talk to. You know, I'm walking somewhere. Hey, Gary, you know, they might say I'm being tough on him and everything. Look, I like the kid. This is yeah, not about too. that. Yeah. He's got to show us that he is the guy. Now, he he showed us glimpses and things, but he's he's got to prove to us. And you can't look up and all of a sudden, Mitchell's out there. He's shining. And you were running the same offense. You had these, the same talent. And so we know that, hey, he's still got to step it up now. It, it's very interesting. Okay, they're going back to him. He's going to have the ball. After this buy, he's going to have that ball back in his hands, and and this is going to be. I tell you, this is. You going think to there'll be a quick be a hook, Gary, Gary? You think there'll be a quick hook if he's struggling? It won't be quick, but it'll be a halftime. He'll get a half. I think they go in at halftime. He's struggling. I, I think they got to hand that ball to Minshew. You know that's what they're going to do because they want to win. I mean, and then if he's struggling, I mean. I, you know, you've, you've given him most of the season, and he's got to be shining. That's why the Giant game was so painful, know. you know, because this late in the season, be throwing, you know, three interceptions, and each one of them was like a head scratcher. Like, what did you see? What did you see? Like, son, sit here. What did you see? Because we didn't see it. This was, a, a, a you know, like before halftime, you at least get the three points. You're going to throw that ball away. You know nothing's there. You, all you see is Giants jerseys. Come on. So, you know, you, you love this about the game, but this is, hey, you got to make tough tough decisions. You know, this I love is it, what Gary, the NFL right. is about. They got to determine if they're looking at future or they want to win today. I That's will right. say this, though. It's very evident. Do you agree? How about this? I'll ask you, you. You saw this team, and you've been covering this team for decades now. Is this offensive line as good as the 17 offensive line? I, I probably would say uh, no, not – I would say – but I think that in a certain way, maybe they're not as consistent, but their potential is greater. You know, their potential is greater. They have not reached they're, – they're, no, they're not, not anywhere near close to their potential because of Maialata and Dickerson on that left side, man. They are, are the kind of left side where – it, like I, I don't know, you, I think you might have mentioned it when you're talking about the Raiders, you know, years yeah, ago. Yeah, Jalen Upshaw. Yeah, Jalen Upshaw. Play. We're running over here. Yeah, and we could broadcast it, and we're still <laughs> running over here, and you're not gonna stop us. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're, they're about to that point where look, because these guys come through just from a size standpoint. <laughs> you I see know, some man. people over there. These, these guys are not interested in in dealing with, you know, Myalata and Dickerson. I tell you, they, they got something over there. And so, um, you know, they're going to be able to run the ball on people. And so that's something you know. So, you know, that's that's a, that's a nice thing to have when you go it walk is. in and me, you know you got it. Let that. me go over to the defense. I mean, I thought they wobbled a little bit in the first couple series in the first half and in the first quarter. Yeah. But I thought they were spectacular. And, again, it's the Jets, so we always have to temper a little bit. You're supposed to beat shitty teams. So yeah. they took care of business. But – how did you do? How do you? How about this, Gary? Instead of just the Jets uh, game, how do you think they've been playing over the last two months? Well, you know they're headed in the right direction, and I like the fact that they made the change there during that game because they came out and, and they were starting to get back to what they were before, just playing a straight up zone. And, and you know you can't play straight up zone in the NFL anymore. That's right. You got to play matchup zone. When somebody's in your area, you got to get on them. You don't. You don't. Well, I'm in the area. Yeah, you're gonna stand there and watch the guy catch the ball because a good quarterback. If you're standing next to the guy, he's going to throw it to him. I mean, come on. You've got to get tight on guys, and you got to play like, like in uh, basketball where, you know, different teams would play a matchup zone. When that guy's in your area, you're like glue on him. You're all over him, and, and you're physical, and you jam guys and delay their release and all that type of stuff. And I saw more of that in the second half. You saw him clamp down on them. So uh, they get it, and I, I think that they're able to um, – make the changes and I, I really like the way the defense is going. This is gonna be a nice thing because they're you know they they beat Washington and they're gonna have to play well. 
they're capable of it, but they're going to have to play well. And uh, they got a chance, you know, to make the playoffs, but it's up to them. It's in their own how about hands. This? How about this, Gary? Coming out, of the, coming out of the bye, do you think that that Washington game will probably be uh, the, the determining factor of what they're going to do the rest of the year? Because like you said, I do think that that's a debate that they're going to have an off week to think yep. about. Do we play Hurts and look and see if he is truly the guy? Or do they already know he's not the guy? And do they go like this? This guy, Minshew, gives us a better chance of winning ball games. But then again, you know what that does, too? If you're Howie Roseman, hey, how does this help them, Gary, if they're not going to make the playoffs? How does this help them winning kind of more games when that would hurt the draft picks? Well, you know, uh, I, I've heard that up in there in the front office that you've got, uh, you know, um, Jeffrey Laurie, the owner, is on one side of this whole thing with uh, – with Hertz, and that Howie uh, Roseman is on the other side. Do you so, believe that? I, I think there's probably some truth to that. And so, okay. with th with that fact, I think that we could see them, you know, have a hook on him. You know, meaning that if he doesn't play well, that they, they go ahead and pull him. I mean, if if he's really struggling, and 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 that, that means he'd have to be throwing some more interceptions and really struggling. And um, if he, you know, and for them to pull him, but I think they want to win this next game. They know that this next game could get them in the in the playoffs. I mean, because you beat Washington, you know, you you're putting yourself in position to make the playoffs. Gary, does this does this go back a little bit to what the locker room went through, though, or do you think this is a different locker room? Because when you had Wentz and you had you no know, um, Nick Foles. You had that whole dynamic, man, we should be playing this dude. You had another set of people in the building going, hey, we should be playing this dude. And it kind of fractured the locker room a little bit. Is it too premature for that here with these two guys? Because, again, they're very young. Nobody in the locker room knows if these guys are the guys that are going to go forward. We know that Minshew's not going to be the guy. How does this differ from – the Foles and the Went situation with these two guys? Well, it, it's much earlier because, you know, uh, Minchu hasn't been here that long, but Minchu's going to be here. Yeah. I think we can be probably confident. Yeah. yeah. Gonna, he's going to be here backing somebody up because he's a good backup quarterback. Yeah. He's the kind of backup you want. He doesn't need a not lot of work. He hasn't been working very much. You see, give him the ball, he goes out, he starts playing like he's been in there the whole time. That's the kind of backup you want, meaning like he, he really has a lot up here. He really got a good feel for the game. But the whole thing is with Hurts. And, um, and I think they will give Hurts. They're going to give him a chance. This is his time right now. He can take the baton and go. But I think he's, you know, that it's not only will the Eagles make the playoffs. I think Jalen Hurts' future is tied up in these next four games. And so these, 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 these next games are his audition. I think, I think that. They, they want to give him to him. They want him to take it. Now, will he go out and take, you know, and say this? Yes, I am the guy. He's got a chance to take it, but he's going to get the opportunity here because you see, they put him right back in there. He's the starter. He's going to get a chance to take it. And uh, we'll see whether he does or not. I think we'll clearly be able to see. Does he shine during this time? He needs to shine. You know, he needs to come out confidence getting that ball out of his hand, you know, uh, putting that ball in the money, knowing where he's going with the ball, spreading it around. And, and all he's got to do really is don't be greedy. Like those the interceptions he threw against the Giants, he had, you know, uh, 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 running backs out in the flat, dump it to him. You got 10 yards. There's nobody really up on him. All he had to do was just take what they gave him. How many times does Tom Brady take those check downs? Oh, all the time. Come on. Take the check down if it's not there. Don't be greedy. We don't need to turn the ball over. And we know now Washington's not scoring a lot of points. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Oh, yeah. Whoever turns the ball over is going to lose. It's not going to be one team winning so much as one team losing. So all Jalen's got to do, take care of the football. If a guy's open, that's another thing. But if he's not open, go to check down, man. Come on. Absolutely. Gary, great stuff, man. These next couple of games will be. It's going to be his, fun. It'll be, be his fun. audition, and the Eagles have to figure out, 
you know, if it's now or if it's future. I appreciate it, brother. It's going to be very interesting this off week because they got the Washington team coming out of the break. They get a chance to get back to 500. Yep. Thank you, Gary. All right. Hey, have a appreciate good one. It. That's my friend Gary Cobb. Yeah, I think those are great topics. Guys, you want to win now? Or do you want to concern yourself with the future? Gary also said that these next couple games are going to determine whether or not he's back in 2022. Do you agree? I want to hit on that. Do me a favor, guys. Please hit that like button. You guys have been great. I am going to get to all of your spins. We have so much going on here. Obviously, all the college football news, too. Billy Corman. Billy Corman. Billy Corbin. Um, one of the best directors, a dear friend of mine, will be in hour number two. We're going to talk to him about the University of Miami now getting back on the map again, being relevant. We'll talk to him. That'll be an hour two. We're going to get to all your takes, all your spins. Please do me a favor. Think about that. Eagle fans, you want to win today? Or do you want to prepare for the future today? We'll do it next. Keep it here on the National Football Show.